Here we've got a nice, fairly simple number theory problem if you know the trick. And we're highlighting this because this trick is really, really useful. So it's one of those that you should keep at the tip of your tongue at all times. So let's see what we've got. Our goal is to show that the following number, which can be described like this, it's n ones followed by a zero, followed by n sevens, followed by an eight, followed by n plus one ones. Our goal is to show that that number is three times a perfect cube. So I wrote the first four such numbers down here. So we have one, zero, seven, eight, one, 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 zero, seven, seven, eight, one, 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 and so on and so forth. So just to check that this works, maybe comment that each of these is three times m cubed for what value of m. But of course, just finding those four m values is not enough. We want to show that this is always three times a perfect cube. So let's maybe see how we can do this. So I'm going to write this as a sum of a couple of finite geometric series. We'll start at this lower end here. And notice that these n plus 1 ones can be exhibited as 1 plus 10 plus 10 squared all the way up to 10 to the n. So let's do that. We've got 1 plus 10 plus all the way up to 10 to the n. So maybe we'll put that in parentheses here and we'll point out that that exhibits those digits right there. And then that's followed by 8 times 10 to the n plus 1. So that's obviously the number 8 by itself. Okay, then let's see what we have after that. So we'll have 7 times 10 to the n plus 2. But in fact, we can factor that out of this whole thing. And we'll be left with 1 plus 10 plus all the way up to 10 to the n minus 1. Okay, so just to do the same thing here, let's maybe put purple parentheses around this, and we'll note that that is exhibiting these digits. Now you can multiply the seven times 10 to the n plus two through, so you can see the exact digits, but I think it's fine to factor it out like this. Okay, so we've got one more set of digits to work with, and that is this one to one, those n ones at the extreme left hand side. So what do those look like? Those start at 10 to the 2n plus 3. And so we can see that because multiplying this 10 to the n plus 2 through gives us 10 to the 2n plus 1. Then we've got a 0, which is like the 10 to the 2n plus 2 spot. And then that picks up at 10 to the 2n plus 3. But we can do the same thing and factor that out and leave us with a 1 plus 10 plus 10 squared all the way up to 10 to the n minus 1 again. Again, because we have n copies of 1. So I'll put that in red parentheses and we'll overline this in red to show where that came from. Okay, now from here we'll apply the rule of the sum of a finite geometric series. So let's maybe fit that in right here just, just so that we recall. That looks something like this. 1 plus all the way up to u to the k minus 1 is the same thing as u to the k minus 1 over u minus 1. Okay, so that means here we have 10 to the n plus 1 minus 1 over 10 minus 1, but 10 minus 1 is otherwise known as 9. So that's what we get for this thing in orange parentheses. And then next we'll have plus 8 times 10 to the n plus 1. There's no sum that needs to be go on, go on there, but maybe I'll write it with a common denominator. So that'll give me 72 times 10 to the n plus 1 over 9. Again, so that we've got a common denominator. And then this guy will give me 7 times 10 to the n plus 2 times 10 to the n minus 1 over 10 minus 1, which is 9 again. So that's the thing that's happening in these purple parentheses. And then finally, in these red parentheses, we have 10 to the 2n plus 3 times 10 to the n minus 1. And then that's going to be all over 10 minus 1, which is 9 again. Okay, so we've got something that looks like this.
Okay, so now let's start putting some things together. Maybe I'll bring a one ninth out front since I've got a nine for all of these terms in the denominator. And then here I have 10 to the n plus one plus 72 times 10 to the n plus one. That gives me something like 73 times 10 to the n plus one. And here I'll have minus seven times 10 to the n plus two times minus one. But I can write that as minus 70 times 10 to the n plus 1. That's because 70 times 10 to the n plus 1 is the same thing as 7, 7 times 10 to the n plus 2. Okay, so just to reiterate, that comes from this term being distributed over to this minus sign. Okay, so we've taken care of this term, this term, and this term distributing over. That means the next thing would be maybe be this term distributing over. That gives me a plus 7 times 10 to the 2n plus 2. Maybe we'll take care of that in just a minute. And then to make something else that looks a little bit like this, we'll take this 10 to the 2n plus 3, multiply it by negative 1, and bring a 10 out. That gives me minus... 10 times 10 to the 2n plus 2. Again, multiplying those 10s together gives me that 10 to the 2n plus 3. And then we've got two more terms. We have this 10 to the 2n plus 3 times 10 to the n, so that'll be 10 to the 3n plus 3. And then we have this minus 1 over here, so minus 1. Okay, so that's what we get with some clever combining of like terms. Now let's rewrite this a little bit. So this is going to be 1 over 9. Maybe I'll bring this here over here. That'll give me 10 to the n plus 1 cubed. So I'll write it like that instead of 10 to the 3n plus 3, just to be suggestive. And then let's like maybe combine some of our other terms. So check it out. Right here we'll have a minus 3 times 10 to the n plus 1 squared. That's because we've got a 2n plus 2. That comes from the 7 minus 10. And then here we have the 73 minus 70. That gives us a plus 3 times 10 to the n plus 1. And then finally this minus 1 on the outside. Okay, so that's starting to look good. Let's maybe bring that up and then we can finish it off. So far, we've taken the number in question and rewritten it as follows. But this looks like a polynomial that's been evaluated at 10 to the n plus 1. And let's write down exactly what that polynomial is. This is x cubed minus 3 times x squared plus 3 times x minus 1 with x equals 10 to the n plus 1. Okay, so that's nice. But what's really nice about that is that this polynomial has a kind of well-known factorization. So this is in fact equal to x minus one quantity cubed. You can see that just by multiplying it out longhand or that's by the binomial expansion. So these numbers three and three, that's three choose one and three choose two. We pick up a minus sign because of this minus sign. Okay, nice. So that means we're able to take this entire thing and write it as 1 over 9, and then we'll have at 10 to the n plus 1 minus 1 quantity cubed. So let's notice that when we divide 10 by 3, we get a remainder of 1. So we get a quotient of 3 and a remainder of 1. But that means any power of 10 divided by 3 will also give us a remainder of 1. But there's a kind of quicker way to write that, and that is that 10 to the n plus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 3 for all n. Okay, but if 10 to the n plus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 3, that's the same thing as saying 10 to the n plus 1 minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 3. But being congruent to 0 mod 3 means that you are a multiple of 3. So we can take this and write 10 to the n plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 3 times m for some natural number m. 
then we can take that expression for 10 to the n plus 1 minus 1 and put it into what we have. That gives us 1 over 9 times 3 times m quantity cubed. We can bring the 3 cubed out, which is 27 over 9, leaving us with 3 times m cubed. But that's exactly where we wanted to end. And that's a good place to stop.